So, hello friends, this is Brain from GameBrain.media. I'm here with my buddy Soul Piper. Do a mic check, hello. hello. And uh, we're going to play Mudrunner. I have the American Wilds DLC, and that's why you're seeing this beautiful screen with this great sunset um, background. And we're going to load up... of me. Pardon? Complimentaries of me. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was a gift from uh, Soul Piper because he wanted me to have this... Uh, what was it? A Hummer? Yes. Humvee that was, uh, well, I think we used it as a rescue rig several times. We did. We did. So, all right, I started a friends-only multiplayer lobby. You can join, and then I'll start picking trucks. So, if you're fairly new to Mudrunner and you don't know the drill, uh, that's why I wanted to start off on that main page. And you can you can rewind and, and notice there's single player and multiplayer buttons, and then you can have a multiplayer instance where you just join general population of random people on the internet. A lot of times you're going to find a lot of people in Russia playing this game, and they won't understand, or you won't be able to ta text chat or communicate in the game. You gotta invite. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Oh, Down I didn't the invite the you on Steam Friends. Yep. You're invisible. Pardon? You're invisible. Oh, correct. Do you need an invite from Steam? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. If I do invite friends... Oh, I... Oh, I can... I, that's right. I can be invisible. And there you go. All right, so also, if you're new to multiplayer gaming, you can create a friends-only game like we just did. And I clicked... Uh, that button right there, invite friends, and then it opens that opens up your Steam friends list, and you pick out your buddies, and you send them an invitation. They click a button and are automatically brought into your game. So now I need to go hit the Manage Mods button, and go down here and find Rock Runners Off Road Park. No, that's different. Uh, White Knuckles. So if this is the first time you're coming into one of these videos, I've been doing a series Ford versus Chevy versus Dodge. And we've been doing it at uh, the same map or level or track. A lot of people use different terms for the same thing. And finding the mods in your installed mod list is over here on the right hand column. And I struggle because it's not alphabetical there it is, White Knuckle Trails, okay? And, like, see, this is White Knuckle Trails, but down here it says Rock Runners Off-Road Park. So, a lot of times in my head, I'll be looking for Rock Runners White Knuckle Trails, and that's not what it's called, although it's the same creator, Rock Runner. All right, now, along with that, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, go in here and click the map. And now that I've added White Knuckles, there it is. So there's White Knuckle Trails, and that... That's important because you have to pick the map first, because this map supports four vehicles. The other map that I was on, a uh, default loaded map, only support, supported two vehicles. In today's case, we're only going to be running three vehicles. So I have to go back into Manage Mods and pick out IR1978 Bronco. So IR is a mod maker. Invalid Redneck is what the IR stand, stands for. Now see, these are his trucks also. <laughs> and that's when he was just calling himself Redneck. Then he became IR. And you're going to see square bracket here, like this. Square bracket, IR square bracket. Um, so where in the hell is the 78 Ford Bronco from IR? See, if this list was oh, alphabetized, Batman. it'd be a thousand times easier to find stuff. I there it is. get to actually run that one. IR78 Ford Bronco, and then we're going to look for Spun 82 Chevy K5RL. So let's start Spun 82. That's the first thing we need to find. Um... It's 
like watching paint dry. Ah, spawn, spawn. No, that's what we ran yesterday was the Spun 78 Bronco. Today we're doing Invalid Rednecks. IR Bronco, but Spun's... Here it is. Spun 82. Mm, nope. That is the K5 crawler. We It's a built rig. Yeah, which performed quite nice. Ah, here it is. All right. Um, now, final things to find frogs. And I thought that was one of the most recently added rigs. Frogs 79 Dodge. Okay. Frogs 79 Dodge Ram Charger. LS SW or Swapper. All right, so now that I've picked those as available vehicles, I have to go through here and add them to the specific map. So the first thing we want is we want to do everything in in the order. Ford, Chevy, Dodge. So I picked the Ford Bronco, and now I'm going to pick a Chevy. Then I'm going to pick the Dodge. Oh. His Ram Charger doesn't have, uh, has the uh, um, cover on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the Blazer does not, and the Bronco does not. So, for the benefit of the viewers, Spun and I were, or Soul Piper and I were talking about uh, that the, the previous Ford versus Chevy versus Dodge, we were using crawlers or really built rigs. Rigs that have like a custom frame or really serious customizations. Two built frames. Pardon? Two built. Yeah, very heavily built rigs. Uh, more like a crawler, right? With a, yeah. with a, with a custom frame and um, stuff. And today, these are more or less... Um, oh, good. You're ready? I'm going to launch. Start game casual. These are more like a, a garage lift kit or... Maybe a shop-built rig. Um, but I haven't run them. Now, that Dodge absolutely looks like something that... Oh, my God, that looks like a stock vehicle. All right, and then the uh, the Bronco and the Blazer... Oh, they're going to... Well, we'll see. <laughs> I, I, we could... You know, there's just not that many Dodge Ram Chargers to throw into the mix. And I guess we could probably find a very stock-looking Bronco and a very stock-looking Blazer. But this Blazer looks like it's going to dominate just by appearances. Okay. Which one do you want first? Uh, well, I always go with the Ford and then the Chevy and the Dodge. So I'm going to go to Advanced, Change Truck. I just want to drop the Chevy. So it, I want to see how close it is to the... Uh, Oh, you know what? When it was raised up off the ground, floating in the air, the suspension was really stretched out. It's definitely built better than the Dodge, but it's not... It, it doesn't look unreasonable. So now I'm going to change truck into that Bronco, and same thing. It probably will drop itself to... Uh, uh, that That's still a pretty built rig, man. Well, it's not a built rig, it's a garage rig. You know, you can put that lift kit on in your garage, and, and I just wasn't expecting the Ram Charger to be so blasé. All right. Um, since we are doing this for a stream, I'm going to go ahead and park them for a picture. Okay, there it is, dude. I want to get rid of that that red stuff. There we go. Cool. Uh, the lights look pretty cool. I mean, everything about this game visually is pretty damn cool. Uh, when you allow, allow the time of day to change, the sunset, night driving with headlights, that's all. Yeah, but we're running 
reshade too. So. Well, that's true. The Adega mod. So, for viewers who aren't familiar with that, um, we have the game modified using something called the Adega mod, which uses a product called Reshade, which is a bunch of graphic shaders and <sighs> software stuff that uh, make the game look better than it does in its stock form. Ooh, ooh. Put them down that. And we're also using something called the Spin Tires mod, which gives us a winch that is battery operated instead of a power takeoff where the engine has to be running. So even if your truck is upside down, the engine is stalled and you would not be able to, in the stock game, you would not be able to use your power takeoff winch because you have no power. Your engine is stalled because you're upside down. But with the Spin Tires yeah, mod, yeah. you have a battery powered winch that uh, can be used. And you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go pretty wide on this turn because this rig is not uh, inspiring a shit ton of confidence in me. It. Oh. It'll take some effort. It got there. Oh well, I'm not there yet. Oh, I'm sure I can downshift and do better. Okay. Here's our problem. Our first real obstacle, anyway. The rock wall. Oh, yeah. Our evil nemesis. For that has been difficult. Trucks like this. <laughs> getting up. That's like the second. Th this being the first obstacle is pretty damn tricky sometimes. That Depending on the vehicle. The squeeze. Um, let's see, now I'm in reverse. And my bumper is augered. But it did make the front end shift over. <laughs> I tried to go wide to the right. <laughs> and now I'm all the way over on the left side of the obstacle. Yep. Because I went right too. And now I can't back up because my bumper is just, just kind of stuck under a rock when I throw in reverse. You can come back down and yank you out if you need to. Yeah, I got a battery winch. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm not going to be going backwards anytime soon. I don't think I'm going to rock my way out of this. So, <clears throat> maybe I can climb over here on the grass. <laughs> oh, the rear tires are just buried. Let me try Granny. No, I, I've sunk the rear end. Oh, God, I love the dirt mod, dude, or the realistic dirt. Oh, for people who haven't seen other videos in the past, another facet of Mud Runner, we're both using a mod called Realistic Dirt. You can find it on the internet. Um, be careful, there is a version that gets flagged as including a virus, but, you know, just hopefully you're running a vast or some kind of antivirus software. I'm going to go ahead and throw my winch. So, let's see, I'm going to advanced mode, click a little white button, click a tree, press F. Pull myself up. But, you see the mud caked on the tires and the truck? Um, that's not usually like that. That's because we are using the realistic dirt mod. Like I said, you can find it just through a simple search. And the zip file is called True Dirt. And I have a video on how to use it and install it and all that crap. But I refer to it as the Mud Mod. So, just so you know, three different, three different 
terms for the same damn thing. I'm in granny gear, man. Oh. Yeah, this is, uh... This is an obstacle that... I could not get up with the built rig. I had to winch that one, too. And I call this the pole dancing obstacle, because there's a tree over there, and usually I'm heading that direction to the right, looking at that as an easier line, and my truck stands stands up and lean, rests on its rear bumper with no wheels touching the ground. Well, all I need to do is hook... Oh, there it is. There. You got it. There we go. Oh, now you're high-centered. It looks no, like your undercarriage is on a hump. Your undercarriage is on a hump from my perspective. Let me zoom in. Yeah. Yeah, your drive shaft's uh, bouncing on the earth. Well, you know, considering these are garage quality lift trucks. There we go. Good job. Um, I, I think I'm just going to, if I get screwed or if I get stuck here, which I already am, <laughs> um, this rig is going to require a lot more winching because it's a lesser quality rig. Or it's All lesser. honesty, I did use the winch just to nudge the tires over a bit oh. from the tree. I didn't use it to get up, I just used it to readjust the front end. And again, I will mention, for people who may not be familiar with Mudrunner yet, um, and using the Spin Tires mod, when you're multiplayer, you can't see your buddy who's playing in the game with you. You can't see them utilize a winch on their own to save their own vehicle, but they can throw you a hook. In fact, let's just illustrate that. Let's see. Either you throw me one or I'll request one. I'm already throwing you one, but I only got your quarter panel. Oh. Okay, then that's probably not the best attachment point. I will go ahead and do this and re uh, request from you. And... So now he's give he's accepted my winch request. Oops. That's the one thing that I wish we didn't have to do is accept it. I'd rather just have a auto accept so we can do quick winches to save each other from oh, rolling from, over. <laughs> from death. <laughs> yes. Cause you I, know our rescue uh, track, don't we? Um, sometimes we're good and sometimes we're not. <laughs> Alright, so. The guy who came through here before me dug a giant hole in the mud. My bad. No, I'm kidding. I, I actually don't know if it's... Does it really de uh, retain Degrade? deformation? I, I think it does. Because my it tires does. are basically half buried, man. You're going to have to hook. Well, I'm still attached to you, so I I, I I can hit the magic button if I want to. What I wanted to do is shift into reverse and try going over here on... Yeah, that's on where right. I had to go. Put the passenger tire on the dirt and just kind of yeah. hook it around the rock. I'm gonna winch. <clears throat> yeah, it's just not getting there by itself. Well, okay, I'm up. Oh no! Oh no! no! no. <laughs> Did you disconnect me? I thought you were up, so I just... I thought I was up, too, but then I, I hit the brakes because I didn't want to rear-end you. <laughs> oh. oh, well, no big deal. We can still get her done. Uh, 
That's your corner panel. Want me to yank you up backwards? No. I'm getting it turned around. This pole dancing obstacle is, uh, <laughs> oh my god, just a real bear. Huh, I was just wondering, could I get up it backwards? I don't think so. I think my rear bumper is uh, doesn't have the entry angle. Okay, let me yeah. set that parking brake. And, uh, you know what? Why don't you pull ahead, because I want to get all the way up the shelf here. Uh, oh, crap. I forgot I had this other phone turned on. Okay, and now I will go to advanced mode, grab a, grab a winch point. Turn on my parking brake would help a lot. <laughs> wow, it's a powerful winch, man. You could break your vehicle. Pretty easy with that. Holy cow. The realistic mud is so awesome. Alright, and here we go. I think that Chevy is going to make mincemeat of these obstacles. Because it just has a better... It, it looks to have a little better, a more aggressive lift. Yeah. And then the Dodge, it looks like a bone stock rig, man. However... I, the oh. drugs, because I think we have two versions. Of what? Two versions of the same mod. Like, you pick the different color, I pick the darker color. And oh. I think the darker color is different. For the Dodge? Yes. The Blazer and... The Bronco and the Blazer only came in. The Bronco and Blue and the... For Frog's Bla one. Blazer and White, yeah. So, a couple things on the... Uh, on the fact that that... Uh, that Dodge Ram Charger we've got selected for this event, or for this uh, weekend uh, drive, it looks bone stock. That truck looks bone stock. However, as I've begun to learn a little bit about mud runner modding of vehicles, that truck could be given properties that make the tires stickier than, you know, a standard all-terrain tire, or it could be the equivalent of a mud train tire, so... We'll see, and even though it's got, like, really limited suspension travel, doesn't have a lift kit on it, but, uh, who knows? M maybe it will be a cheater truck, or have superpowers, because different creators can assign different properties to the suspension, the traction of the tire, and all kinds of other geometry stuff. Oh, I'm sensing a winch was used. Just to get the tires over the lip, and that was it. Well, you know, that's 99% of the, the game right there. Getting the tires over the lip. I don't mean the game, I mean, you know, wheeling. Wheeling, yeah. Okay, I need to slow my roll. And I'm sure you switched out lockers on or off? Uh, I've been on an all lockers on and off this entire time or on all time since we started oh, okay. I have a, all wheel and lockers <clears throat> yeah and I, I've from watching Mud Runner Maniac uh, and eh, you know realizing that in real life um, oh shit he turns the lockers off He he runs with just all wheel drive yeah he turns the diff locks off because it puts a great deal of stress on all of your mechanical members. Mm -hmm. 
in reality. Uh, but, you know, it's a game. If you want to play the game realistically, then that would be the way to go. Oh, man, here we go. Alright, so I'm gonna go to Granny Gear. Were you trying to get up that in Granny? Yeah. Oh, wow. Three low. Oh, three low, not Granny Granny. To me, gra Granny is low one, and then you got low two and low three. But yeah, um, I've never had a vehicle with lockers, but I do know when I watch YouTube videos of the Jeep, the Jeep crowd, they do use them intermittently and sporadically. Like, uh, you know, you want a freewheeling diff because it's, it's just less strain, and you get the tire that hooks up with some traction, goes. <clears throat> when you turn on diff locks, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stress on. A tire that is going to slip and the other one's not. Um, yeah, it's hard to explain it for you. Unless you've been there, done that. Oh, so I guess I'm gonna have to winch. I get a general idea. I mean, if a tire has grip. It's the one that's not spinning. The all, the other three are spinning. Right, but when you have diff locks on, all of them one won't uh, spin, spin regardless, unless the other one spins. So it's just a huge amount of stress on that one specific wheel and everything connected to it. Oh my God! Just getting my wheels over wasn't enough. I had to, I had to winch the whole damn truck over. But hey, if you came out here in that built Bronco, uh, it'd be a lot. It was a lot easier than what we're experiencing in these street lifted or garage lifted uh, style vehicles. Right. Ding 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 ding. Posing. <laughs> Okay, then let me turn my wheels. <laughs> you took a screenshot? Yeah. Just give me a shout out. Selfie time. Wow, Granny Gear is so slow. And I can't believe how much I'm freaking spinning wheels. Spinning tires. In low, low, low. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to shift. So, it's unfortunate Maniac isn't wheeling or whatever lately, but, uh, yeah, but the game is absolutely stupendous, and I guess what we're, I'm trying to express to people who are watching, and if you don't have the game, it's, it's pretty realistic, because we were using built rigs, that could bomb through this stuff pretty easily, and here we have some moderate rigs, and we're gonna we're having to go really slow and use winches, substantially more than uh, you know driving the big rigs or the built rigs, the crawlers, and you know that's par for the course. It's it's very realistic. Now I got the squeeze coming up. Oh wow. Oh, I hate that squeeze point. Oh! Oh, wait, never mind. Too late. Oh, I was tweaked? You were pretty wrenched over. But then you hit the gas. <laughs> yeah, my god. The entry angle is, is a huge pain in the butt with this rig. I'm augering the bumper on the regular. Okay, here, here's what I call the pinch point. I tried going hard left last time. I don't think there's any easy way to get up this. No, there isn't. You gotta go into the funnel. Are you connected? No. 
My it's god, all you look just like throttle. You, you walked right up that like nothing. That was impressive. Were you in low low, Granny? I uh, low three. Holy low shit. three in lockers and I just throttle control. Alright, well, I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh man, it's really hard to maintain just like a sixteenth of a of a pedal. Yeah, that's or even a trigger. Uh, a, that's why I don't use a gamepad. I can't do a sixteenth. I end up pulling too hard and spin tires. Holy cow, that's the easiest I ever got up that little pinch point. Because I just kept my ankle locked and I, I used my knee <laughs> to push the pedal. Wow. That was awesome. Oh, here we are coming to the end. Oh, no, we're not. This is uh, only the. This is not that particular waterway. Wrong and go on that. So, this is kind of funny. Um, I used to own a Yamaha FZ1000 from the year 2001. I bought it brand new in 01. Mm -hmm. And I was on a sport bike forum. And uh, I saw a couple other guys. Oh, man, they got the same bike. And then there was a group ride. And I met up with those same people. And we had identical bikes. So there were three of us, identical fucking bikes. Black Yamaha FZ1000. That's what this reminds me of. We're both in identical rigs. Um, and, you know, it was kind of weird going... Ah! And because we all had the same motorcycle... Um, we, we started talking to each other. And we ended up doing a group ride. The three of us, we went down from Chicago to Lexington, Kentucky. And it was just an absolute riot. Oh, my God. The, the, the roads were twisty. Um, it was fun camping off your motorcycle with a tent. Um, we did three days in a tent, and then we, we grabbed a hotel, and then we just blitzed home. And, you know, three identical bikes going 120 miles an hour on the expressway are just this giant glowing target for the cops or for some idiot with a cell phone who called the cops and said, Oh, there's three motorcycles going really, really fast. Um, I had radar on my bike. So, you know, I would just wave my hand or I'd touch, my, touch the top of my helmet, popo, and, uh, and then we would slow down and we'd go with the flow. You know, the traffic was flowing at 75 miles an hour on Interstate 65 going home and stuff like that. But this just reminds me of uh, driving or riding the exact same vehicle. It's kind of weird. Now, I had a, uh, had a mechanic. I worked at a construction company, and the company had 20 trucks. So we had a fleet mechanic who did all of the work general maintenance, oil changes, you know, all, all that, and any kind of breakdowns. So, he was a pretty reputable guy, and, you know, he took care of that company, and I had my own personal vehicle, and I said, hey, man, will you do work to my truck? And he's like, sure. Um, so, he did work to my truck, and why did I bring that up? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. My truck, uh, I had moved from my house with an asphalt driveway uh -huh. and I was renting a house much closer to where I had begun working at the company that owned 20 trucks and uh, I had a gravel driveway I was on five acres in the boonies compared to you know asphalt driveway in a neighborhood um, anyway the bot my truck was just rusting apart and had my truck, um, maybe I was getting U -joint, a U-joint replaced or something, started making noise, and he lifted the truck, and he's like, oh my god, everything under here is shot, dude. Like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I mean, your shocks still work, but the shock body, it, it's basically disintegrating. And I'm like, why? 
He's like, well, I mean, clearly in Chicago they salt the roads, and salt is a huge contributor to the rusting of vehicles. Anyway, long story short, he told me that uh, him and his father bought identical Ford F-150s. Identical. Same color. You know, a fleet vehicle is usually white. And because he was a fleet mechanic, he had a deal with, uh, or he got a deal through one of his, you know, construction clients who he maintained all the trucks for. And he bought Ford F-150s, the company I worked for, they bought everything was a Chevy. Um, so anyway, he had, him and his father had two identical trucks, but his, he lived in a neighborhood in a house and parked on asphalt. His father lived in the boonies and parked in gravel. And he's like, aha. After, after I told him, he's like, what happened to your truck, man? Uh, suddenly it went from, you know, being fine to just being a rust bucket. And I'm like, well, I moved. I'm living on, you know, I'm living on, I'm living right here. I don't drive it nearly as much. There shouldn't be as much salt and shit happening to it. He's like, aha. He's like, where do you live? Or what is your driveway? He's like, are you on gravel? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, there you go. He's like, my dad's truck is a rust bucket. He parks it on gravel. When it rains, the gravel never dries. When at your house, uh, he's like, at my house, I have an asphalt driveway and then I drive it to work. My dad lets his truck sit there for three, four, five days. He only goes, he only leaves the house once a day. I had a company truck that I drove to and from work, so my truck sat on the property. Oh, look at that. Why is my headlight not going off? Oh, well. Um, Do you have your engine still running? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to go to advance. Stop engine. Yep. Anyway. It just reminded me, like, it, it, it looks like these are two identical um, fleet vehicles. Same paint job. Mine's going to turn to rust because I live on gravel, and yours is going to live because you live on asphalt. <laughs> All right, who's next? Chevy. Spuns. So since that mechanic told me that particular story about two identical, you know, he said they were even sequential serial numbers or VIN numbers. They came off the fucking assembly line and were purchased for a fleet that was coming to that construction company that he got them from um, at, when they purchased like, you know, eight trucks or 12 trucks or something. Yeah. And then later in life, more or less confirmed the exact same situation um, with a friend of mine who had a vehicle that rusted like hell. And he's like, yeah, I live on gravel. And he's like, my... Uh, uh, his, his buddy has... Well, it was like an F-250 versus an F-150, but they bought them at the same time from the same dealership. And one guy lived on uh, pavement, one guy lived on gravel. And I'm like, and you really noticed that yours turned into a rust bucket and his, his truck was not? And he's like, well, yeah, but we thought it was the F-150 versus the F-250 and some, some weird shit between the two models. I told him that story, and he's like, I'll bet you're right, man. I'll bet it's all about the fact that uh, the water retention of gravel and that it's just constantly damp under the vehicle. Now, this rig is clearly built more than your, your average garage lift kit. He's got a roll bar in it. He's popped the top. And uh, we're ready to roll. It's you, you first. But I think this truck is going to be substantially better than the Ford. Yeah. I'm really interested to see how that Ram Charger does, being that it's more or less, you know, street trim. It looks like a bone stock vehicle.
So you're getting high centered. Yeah. I'm gonna guess you're gonna have to winch. I wonder how far. How far to the, to the right can I approach this from? It's not far. Did you use a little assist? Yeah, just a little bump. Okay. I'm, I'm expecting I'll have to. I'm going to try to maintain the same camera angle on this on this truck. Oh! Oh! Dude, I'm... Oh! I got the front over by starting really far to the right. Yeah, that's <sighs> where I ended up. Oh my god, nice. I, got, I got up at it without a winch. Now this obstacle, I just, I just don't know how. Uh, I want to move the camera just to see and watch your uh, <laughs> machinations. Oh, that looked like the. That looked like the line. That's the line that I've been sh trying to get to, and nope. One time I hit that damn tree. So did you use a little little winchage there? Nope. Wow, you got up that then. Good job. Yep. Uh, three low? Three low, and throttle control. All right, so I'm going to try to lock my camera. Going hard, or hard, hard to the right. And just try to miss that tree. Oh. No, oh, didn't have uh, diff locks on. And now I'm. Yeah, I'm, tree it, next to the tree. Yeah, so my tire would clip that tree and prevent me from getting up. Oh, I am. Actually, my tire is grinding bark off that tree right now. Oh. Now, see, the camera is floating around, trying to help me, but I guess I haven't got it. I didn't tick the mouse for it to be fixed cam mode. There you go. Oh, I'm so close. I'm so close. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm pinned behind the tree now. Just too old, fat, and lazy to get out of the truck and hook up the winch. Alright, well, <clears throat> let's get on with the show here. At least you can see, you know, like, if you aren't actively using the winch, the the cable goes slack, which is which is nice yes. to know that, you know, you, you, you put it on there for three feet of pull, and then once you lip, or once you hook a lip, you can let go of the power winch, and the cable will slack in, and you, you're on your own again. Man, I do love white vehicles, but they do not look good with rust. 
My truck is white, by the way. Real life. No! Oh, I'm skidding down the hill. Yeah, that tree will lock you into place. Oh. There you go. You avoided it. That's how why I had to back up. It just kind of locked the driver's side tire into place. Honestly, this is gonna say I'm gonna say more fun than uh, than the built rigs. I mean, because the, them, you know, they're so built, you just assault the hill, you just throw them at it. And this, yeah. you really gotta like work it a little bit. Use some um, what's the word? Um, Throttle discipline. Finesse. Yeah, finesse. Yeah. Um, to get her done. But, yeah, we've had to winch these uh, a little more than the other ones. Oh my god, I made it. But I'm definitely picking more creative lines than knowing I can just overcome something with brute force. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, can I get there? In Sorry, time? I got to I got to pose. Hold still, yeah, hold still, yeah. Mm. That, that's that's got to be a good one. Mm. I wonder if I can swing around far enough to uh, to see the front of your truck. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's a good picture. I'm ready to go in your. <laughs> We're nearing. No, wait. Never mind. Thought we were nearing the end. Yeah. Anytime I see that body of water, it triggers me like, oh, hey, here we are. No, we're not there yet. There's actually three little puddles. Yay! I get to wash the mud off my tires. They're <laughs> caked. Oh, it's a pinch point. Okay. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, right up that next lip. Through the groove, up the lip, and into the pinch. So, like we were talking about, uh, in Discord, um, it's been really cool running the same trail with the same trucks and the same obstacles, and and finding that leveling factor. Yeah, it handles just like the other one. Just find a good line and let don't. Smash the throttle, just let the tires do what they do best. You, you did that in three low? Yeah, three low. I think that's what I did in the Bronco here. It got up it pretty easily, but there we go. I, I, I kind of was in, I don't know, some the tire was like hooked under a rock or something that had me stymied for a minute. There we go. Now we're shifting over. I'm 
My god, this would be so much fun in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so expensive in real life. Well, next best thing is VR. Yes. My buddy loaned me his Oculus, uh, like the original, nah, I guess it was Gen 2, um, but it was the, the highest quality, you know. Yeah. He, he, he's a... Uh, He's got some money. It was twelve hundred bucks, I think, when he got it. Nah, maybe no, nah, it was only six hundred. It was six hundred, it came with uh, two sensors, two hand units, the goggles, and then later they put out a three hundred dollar unit. Yeah, that's how that worked. And he loaned it to me for a couple of weeks and he's like I gave it back to him like, you know, that's really, really cool, but I only have like three games this works with right now. And he's like, Yeah. He's like, I I mean I'll sell it to you for half what I paid. I'm like, mm, so tempting. That I could have gotten that thing for 300 bucks. I just didn't have 300 bucks at the time. Wow, that little sequence of hills? Yeah, I just kind of crawled right up it. Stupidly easy, yeah. Yeah, but Oculus is awesome. I played, uh, I played Assetto Corsa racing game in that. It's pretty cool to just turn your head and see that you have a car next to you as you try to, you know, um, race for position, take the inside line, the outside line, and not hit the car next to you and and deflect yourself into the guardrail. <laughs> <laughs> I also played uh, Elite Dangerous, uh, it's a space sim game, and that was super cool because you could just look around and you could look at the console. The difficult thing was, even though I had a a flight stick and a yoke, there's a lot of buttons, a lot of controls in that game. Like Microsoft Flight Simulator, too. I think I tried with that. Yeah. Um, but you're have... blind. You can't look down and touch anything on the keyboard because you're wearing goggles. So, you know, even though I had a joystick and a throttle and a bunch of buttons... I didn't have all the button mappings memorized because I was just borrowing it, you know? And I'm like, yeah. wow, this is cool. Um, it would really take some time to build that memory for a specific game. And it, 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 it's awesome. I can't remember the third game that I, I tried with that. I'd like to get a, a fight sim called IL. And eventually get a VR rig because I'm into um, World War II light sims oh All right. I got a one called James Flight Simulator <clears throat> that you cannot find anymore no it's a super old game so did you say yeah. IL2 or did you say IO2 IL2 yeah oh I, I have IL2 um I didn't realize Oculus, they added support for Oculus. That's crazy. That game is wicked old. Yeah. Just like Jane's. Okay, we're going to need a brief intermission when we hit the end of the trail. All right. Oh yeah, <laughs> falling down a hill. Didn't go head over heels though. No pirouettes this time. Yeah, that got kind of hairy when I did that with the <laughs> the K5, the crawler. Yeah. The front end just kind of stuck, and I was like, "Oh no!" All right. Well, that was freaking awesome, I have to say. That Chevy ate it up. It did. So I think this is a second win for Chevy. Yeah, but we still have one more to go, so... Yep. <clears throat> All right. I am going to pause on this screen real quick. BRB. Dude, um, my roommate and I have been buying 
uh, mega, mega million lottery tickets intermittently. The mega million is up to like 800 million right now. It's crazy. So if we win, I'm going to come visit you. <laughs> yeah, they are different. Oh, yeah, you got the gray one. I got a red and white. Cool. All right, well, you go. Oh, you got different rims and tires. Yep. Mine is um, it's a slightly lifted. Yours is more. Yeah, mine's pretty bone stock. That's cool. Oh, hey, when you get over there to uh, to fill up with gas, um, just pull out pull out on the road before we charge off to the trailhead, and uh, and, and let's park side by side because, whoops, it looks like your hood is a good six inches taller than mine. Nah, yeah, maybe it's only like three or four inches. Right. All right, so here as we sit side by side, you know, I'm moving the c camera around. And yeah, you have definitely have bigger, fatter, more gnarly tires. Uh, but it looks, like a, it looks like we're the same ride height, honestly. Yours might actually be a tiny more squat than mine. I'm looking at the front end, uh, the pumpkin, and the uh, shackles holding the leaf springs on. Wow, that's odd. The leaf spring goes under the axle. Um, that's not typical, unless they're trying to intentionally go for a low ride height. Huh, that's kind of odd. All right, well, I'm ready to roll if you are. My leaf spring is above the axle and even has a lift block on the rear. Um, but I also have a towing package and a snowplow package, so that's, it adds a leaf front and rear, which really is only about a half inch. Um, I don't have a leveling kit on my truck. My, it just came from the factory riding pretty level. But I have a huge block in the rear, and I'd really like to just have a full... Man, my truck is too shot right now. Um, but I'd love to put a lift kit on it and do a full leaf direct to the axle without a lift block. Okay. The, uh, the... the I have a toolbox cover, an A-R-E uh, toolbox cover, on the truck. Because I was a carpenter, and fill it with tools, uh -huh. and it can be locked. But my tailgate has rusted to the point that I can no longer use my tailgate, or it might fall off. The pivot, the pivot, um, you know, there's little round pins. That is just disintegrated in cancer, rusted cancer. So I keep the tailgate up and locked at all times, and then I have the topper on there. But I'd like to ditch the topper and ditch the entire fucking bed, and I've even shopped for it. Um, it's way too much money and way more than you know what I can do in my garage. I don't have any welding equipment, but I want to put a flatbed on it. It would be cool as hell. And then build some uh, toolboxes directly on the flatbed that either hang above or below. On either nice. side. You got up, up that pretty nice. Yeah, that went like a, a piece of cake. Good lord, you went right over that thing too. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I, I'm in automatic. There you go. Uh, damn near got there in automatic. I could slow my foot. God damn it. I was so close. I think I'll get there. I just need to downshift.
trying to lighten my foot. Yeah, my tires are smoking. Uh oh, oh, same behavior at this obstacle. Every truck tires yeah, over. It doesn't matter which truck I come in. Well, yeah, basically slides the front end goes up the hill and then slides down to the right. And then I end up having to throw it in reverse and, and get realigned to attack the obstacle perpendicular. It's so frustrating. And... Oh, no wonder this truck is loud. It's got straight pipes. Yeah, he straight piped it. Yeah, I've got everything turned down as low as possible so that we can be heard in the recording software. Oh, I'm so close. My bumper is... Uh, my, my, my headlight was hitting the frickin' uh, <laughs> tree. Hitting the tree. My tire was clear, but the frickin' headlight was caught. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna take a whole different tactic here. There's no getting around it. It just pushes you to the right. Yeah, it does. Smoking the tires. I can't I can't back off the throttle enough, man. Bump it? Ah, again. I'm okay. so close, but the, the headlight's hitting the tree. Oh, oh, I almost popped around it. The mud looks fantastic, dude. <laughs> oh, so close. Oh. Now, oh, I'm free. I'm free of the, uh, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> it slid over. Got Use the headlight. the winch to just readjust the front end. Yeah. Oh, my God. You wouldn't believe the amount of mud on this thing. I just want to take a picture somehow. There it is. Nah. The suspension is so unimpressive, but the, the mud is spectacular. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into advanced. Give myself a safety line. Just a little bit of help. The line is slack. So apparently the motor is built to the hilt, but the suspension is not. Yeah. Because it sounds bad as hell. It yeah, definitely it has. Like a V8. Definitely has some power. It's really, really hard to just maintain the same camera angle. I want to take a, a top-down, three-quarter isometric style view, but a lot of times I get th the camera is impeded by trees. Yeah, mind of its own. Yeah. Well, but it's impeded by trees, and it, that covers the lens, and then I, I lose you in the shot based on if we're going left or right, up or down an obstacle. Oh, this Not is... Not gonna lie, I buried the front end before I got into that. You buried the front end? What do you mean? I just stuck it in the rock and said, here, take oh, it. Oh, I see. So this is the place where I think my rear end got uh, 
augered last time and I couldn't couldn't climb out. And every time I fell back, my rear end just became more and more entrenched. Yeah, I'm kind of screwed here. Aha, now maybe I can get over here to the right. <clears throat> Ta-da! Woohoo! Heavy, heavy breath. <laughs> yeah, the camera's so freaking wonky, man. I really thought this truck was going to be an underdog, but it's pretty badass. Well, it is an underdog, uh, by appearance. It, yeah. it, it did better than Bronco, in my opinion. It's still, it's still kind of a toss-up for me whether I like the Chevy or this one better. I think the Chevy definitely, definitely nudges this guy out. Yeah. But of course. This, this rig's not a slouch. Here we are at the pinch point. You know, if we had some kind of scoring system, like, nah, they'd be it'd be tough to. Uh, I don't want to go back and watch all the content to see how many times did I have to winch on the full size trucks for the Ford, the Chevy, and the Dodge, and use that as a, a metric, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some sort of scoring system. And I, I don't know if one um, one data point is enough to, you know... Yeah. I, that, that might be the best data point to select in, in figuring out which truck wins? If if the Ford had to be winched four times, and the Chevy had to be winched once, and the Dodge had to be winched twice, guess what? Chevy wins. That would be an interesting uh, exercise. Maybe I'll do that in a year. <laughs> I wish the camera would just not keep showing me all the leaves in my way. All the branches and trees. Uh oh, uh oh. I was trying to take this at, at a real extreme angle so I wouldn't high center, but almost rolled me off. Are you rolling diff lock still? Yeah, I've been diff lock this entire time. Yeah, I've been rolling uh, all wheel and every when I when I'm struggling, I hit diff lock just to maintain the mechanical integrity of my drivetrain. <laughs> well, we I'd be forced to do that if we were running hardcore. You know. I've never really run hardcore. I usually just jump in to have fun and uh, bomb through a trail. But I know you've done the no damage run. Is that do you, do you typically do that on hardcore? I do because damage taken actually affects the truck. Oh, as rather than have casual being damaged, it's just cosmetic. So the engine starts smoking. 
you don't get flat tires or anything, do you? No. I, I think I've seen the engine smoking. Or it just was like, you ain't got no more power. Yeah. And you're getting the little pop-up... Um, pop-ups that say, like... Uh, like... Uh, something about your RPM and shit? I can't remember. Like, how, how it tells you there's damage. Or how, how it starts making damage materialize. The... Uh. It'll start sputtering. Ah, that's right. Yeah, I guess I did end up accidentally being on hardcore for a period of time. Maybe that was in spin tires way back in the day. And uh, I'm like, my god, why is my truck such a piece of crap right now? Because I was just bombing down trails without any regard for its mechanical safety. And the truck was falling apart by the end of the ride. Yeah, this truck's tires aren't in full contact with terra firma at all times, but... I can live with that. I mean, I don't know if it's as simple as a single setting in the mod making, mod modeling software or what, but... Wow. The water pouring off my truck after that little bath. And the mud and everything. Just so cool. Just so cool. Well, that... That rig was stupidly fun. I liked it. So, let's see. Stop engine. Whew. Jump down, turn around, give a dog a bone. Here are the three trucks at the end of the trail. Screenshot. And uh, I'm going to go Chevy Dodge Ford. Yeah, and, me too. And you know what? Just like the last um, image, that Ford is super wide. So... I wonder if there's just a specific scale setting or the original 3D model that was, they started from. You know, they didn't design every facet of this truck themselves and put them together. They either ripped the model out of an other game or they bought a 3D model. Or, you know, well, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the level of mod modability is. But when you look at them from above... As I am looking at them now, take that screenshot too. The Ford is super wide, the Chevy is fairly wide, and the Dodge is substantially narrower. Like, um, you know, maybe one is like the the Bronco being full scale, 100% scale, and maybe the Blazer looks like it's 95% scale. And the Dodge maybe is 90% scale. It's, there's, there's not giant changes. Yeah, there is. I mean, there's, I think, obviously visual, noticeably, there's a difference in, in scale between the rigs. Yeah. Uh, is it 5%, 5%, 5%, or is it like maybe uh, 100%, then down 95, and then 90? Or is that Chevy... Yeah, that looks like about five percent, and maybe maybe the uh, yeah, is the Dodge twenty percent smaller than the Ford? Probably. So that would make it an eighty percent scale, if the Ford is a hundred percent, hundred percent scale. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna dive into some of the mod truck mod maker um, videos on YouTube. I think that will be a really interesting exploration. At least will teach me a few things. And uh, I'd be curious to hear on our next run when we start the uh, Ford Ranger, Chevy S10, probably a Dodge Dakota, and a Toyota. Again, same trail, same... We're going to attempt to find rigs in the same level of built status, something that's super built, 
something that's garage built, and maybe even something that's like bone stock and run those guys. Um, but I'd be interested to hear you talk about your, you know, no damage run. Did, like, did you come across this? Did, did you have a no damage run on any one of these three vehicles? Uh, the Chevy. And you can't, like, you know, go into, um, advanced... I'm going to do advanced, change truck, switch to the Chevy. And when you're in here and you go to advanced, um, all I get to do is start the engine or change truck. I don't get to see. Oh, there it is. Damage, zero of a thousand. So oh. you did a no damage run. Right. So now if I do change truck and I go to the Dodge, I'm at zero of 5,000. Okay, go to advanced, change truck, bounce into the Bronco, and I got zero of 2,000. So, I I mean, are all your trucks undamaged? Uh, no. The Dodge is at three. Just three out of 5,000, or three out of how many yeah, points? Yeah, three out of 5,000. Huh. Uh, the Bronco is at zero. The Ford. Yeah. And then the Chevy is at zero. So I had two out of the three that were no damage runs. Okay. Now, <clears throat> do, do... All right. At some point, let's do a hardcore run. All right. Once, once we find, like, oh, dude, how's this? Once we get through... Whatever the whatever whatever the hell this is taking us, right? Ford, Chevy, Dodge, etc. You know, maybe we'll throw a Toyota in if necessary, or maybe we'll just maybe that's it. Full size SUVs and mini trucks. Uh, I really can't think of. I mean, there neither one of these manufacturers makes a Jeep, right? No, but Jeep we, is a whole other animal. Correct, but we could do a Toyota FJ versus uh, Jeeps. Or we could do CJ, XJ, YJ. Or, you know, we could find some way to do that. But what I'm getting at is uh, after we established the winners here, right, we, mm -hmm. we both liked the, the full-size Chevy. And, in fact, Chevy's coming out the winner here across the board. Well, no, I guess you liked the Dodge better in the last, last round. I can't remember. Yeah, it was the Dodge. All right. So maybe we take the best of and we do a hardcore run with the best of the full size Chevy truck, the Ram charger and whatever comes of the mini truck run. Okay. Let, let's say the S 10 comes out as the champ there. Then we take the Chevy full size. We take the Dodge Ram and we take the S 10 or we take the Toyota, whoever comes out as a winner. And then we take those three vehicles and, and do a Ford Chevy Dodge Datsun or a Ford Chevy Dodge Toyota um, winner hardcore run. Same trail, but on hardcore. And just to look at the damage model and see it. Honestly, this trail is not that taxing. No. But anyway, I'm just freewheeling, trying to think of brainstorming, you know, something to do with uh, the next go round. So, yeah, I hope anybody watching enjoyed the video. And got anything else to uh, to add? No, I'm good. Um, no, never mind. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will both see you on the next go round. For now, Game Brain and Soul Piper are gone, dude. Later.